I'm shorter. So large studies have shown higher rates of adult and childhood cancers and birth defects among people who live around incinerators. These results are consistent with the associations being causative. For example, a study of 14 million people followed for 13 years showed an increase in 11,000 cancer deaths among people who live within 7.5 kilometers of an incinerator. Children living within a five kilometer radius of an incinerator have a doubling of their cancer risk. This body of medical research is sufficiently robust to have precipitated a nationwide citizen movement to, with help from the EPA to have these facilities closed. In fact, during the last 15 years, 98% of the 2,373 medical waste incinerators have been closed. While thousands of communities are cleaner as a result, Utah, things have gotten worse because Stericycle is now accepting waste from up to eight different states to be incinerated in its North Salt Lake plant. As with most incinerators, the health consequences are not so much from the volume of pollutants such as particulates, ozone, NOx, and sulfur dioxide, but the amount of hazardous air pollutions, otherwise known as HAPs, that are designated as such by the EPA because of their high level of toxicity at even small concentrations. HAPs include benzene, dioxins, furans, heavy metals, aromatic hydrocarbons, and even radioactive materials. Stericycle officially mints a similar volume of HAPs to a full-scale oil refinery or coal-fired power plant. But their emissions are released from a much shorter stack at Stericycle. So the, de the deposition is much greater locally. Stericycle's permit allows them to emit 130 pounds of lead per year, 60 pounds of mercury, 100, 912 pounds of chlorine, and 18 pounds of cadmium. cadmium. In all, their, their haps are allowed at 9.5 tons in a year. <laughs> 